needs to be. I'd like to call tonight's Beaver Boardwalk Community Oversight Committee meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions to the agenda? Um, yeah. I sent a, an email around asking um, about the screw piles, if that can be added. Like, we might talk about that in the brands. To me, it's like if somebody asked me, uh, how long was the piles last, and well, how do, do they break down and and uh, attribute some moving element to the wetlands? I can't really answer them, so I'm I'm assuming that won't be a big task. That you know, whoever's using screw piles must have that researched, and we've mentioned it a few times in our meetings, but never really followed up. And just sort of, I think um, Doug commented quite a while ago on the different kinds of sweet piles. So uh, did you want to make a motion to add that then? Okay, I'll make a motion to add a discussion on uh, sweet piles to the agenda. Okay. So you would add that as discussion item 4.2. Are there any other proposed changes? Okay. Seeing nothing, we will we'll we'll have to vote on the uh uh proposed amendment to add the screw pile discussion. Well, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay, so that's carried unanimously. So 4.2 will be 4.2 will be the uh, screw pile discussion. Okay, if there's no further additions to the agenda, we'd look for somebody to move to adopt it. Alice? Move to adopt the agenda. Thank you, Alice. All those in favor? Okay, and that is also carried unanimously. Hey, Tom, can you hear us? Oh, there you are. Good to see you. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Right on. Uh, 2.0 adoption of meeting minutes. Uh, 2.1 meeting minutes from October 26th and November 9th. Any comments or questions about the minutes? Okay, and none, we need a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt the minutes. October 26th and November 9th. Perfect, thank you, Jan. Uh, there's no further discussion. I'll we'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is also carried unanimously. Okay. Yep. We have an introduction. There's still going to be- Oh, sure, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have introduced Heather, I guess. Uh, so Heather Way, our usual administrative representative, is away on holidays. So we have Heather Mark is representing administration here today. Uh, do we want to go around and everybody else introduce? Or? Okay, well, we can start with you, Beth. Um, Beth, um, uh, uh, the... Um... Education um, representative on the BBAC. I'm the president of Whiskey Jack Club as well. I've been involved in the Beaver Boardwalk for since the beginning. Okay. Hey, no. No, that is one. I am, uh, I think I'm the recreation seat on this committee, <laughs> having been the past president of HIMBA and president of Disc Golf, of a few other groups in town. Oh, thanks. Alice? My name is Alice Paquette. Uh, I'm the environmental rep. I was uh, trained as a geologist. And I have um, been working for environmental consulting for quite some time. Cool, excellent chair. Yeah. Uh, Trevor. Uh, Trevor Boudelier. Uh, I'm a member at large. Um, been in Hinton for about five years now. Uh, I'm a surveyor and Ange tech by trade. Thanks. Tom? Uh, Tom Marshall, uh, member at large, uh, longtime Hinton resident, user of the area. I'm not sure what else to say. Kevin? Uh, hi, Heather. Uh, I'm Kevin Gedling. I live in the Maxwell Lake neighborhood uh, down on Collinge. And uh, yeah, most of my background is in uh, communications and uh, heritage interpretation, interpretive guiding and 
all kinds of good things like that. So, hello. <laughs> Okay. I think we all know Chad and myself, so you want a question? Sure, I'm Winston Drusso. I represent the Director of uh, Infrastructure and Public Works and Development for the Town of Hinton. And I'm Debbie Weber, the Engineering and Development Manager for the Town of Hinton. And I'm wearing a mask because I've been sick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sitting aside. <laughs> Thank you all for having us. So pleasure to be here. What was your last name? Mark, M-A-R-K. Okay. <clears throat> you need a paper copy of the agenda, Alice? Okay, so that brings us to information items. 3.1 update, Maxwell Lake ramps. And I believe that's off to you, Winston and Debbie. Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll, we're, we're going to sort of share this um, quick presentation or update, I should say, as uh, the committee is aware that back in 2021 of December, we tendered the project for what council has approved as the bold, which was option three. And option three basically speaks to a north, south and a west um, works that needs to be done. Um, it's basically ramps and then a leveling landing and then a deck. On, on either side of the north and the south, and then the west would have a component that can help us to connect to the portion that is currently submerged in parts of the lake itself. Um, following that, the tender came in in mid early January above what was the expected amounts. Though, when you look at the cost estimate that the engineers have done at the time, uh, that they said that was within those parameters, but the way the project was broken out in terms of the tender, I, I would I would say that it wasn't the easiest to interpret. And again, uh, I'm speaking from not having been involved in the project at the time. I took over the pieces as I came on board, and right now it's in Debbie and my hands to take it forward. Um, then subsequent to that, on um, in August um, of last year, council also made a motion that we should not be adjusting the bridge heights or tamper with the bridge at all the existing bridge that has been spoken about quite at large. Um, then further to that, council made a motion in February of 2022 that we go out to retender that tender of January 2021 and ensure that we, 2022, my apology, um, that we split the tender so that we can allow for local contract participation and that that tend to also be uh, advertised for a longer period for at least four weeks. And, and so that is the orders that we as administration have. Um, well, at the time it was to get better pricing and inclusivity of local contractors. And that's what we are working on right now in terms of going on to tender. Uh, there are a few other steps that we need to take in parallel with the tenders we go out. And I'll just let Debbie speak to that, and that's more on the environmental AP component. Debbie. Sure. Uh, so, uh, as Mr. Russo said, uh, in accordance with our AEP permit, we have to reapply for our Alberta environment permit uh, just because of the time lag between uh, when we had applied, when we thought we would do the project last winter and now. So as part of that, we have to do a seven day notification period for the public as part of that. And um, so what we plan to do to assist us with that and to refresh everybody on the project itself is we plan to post a tender for the 21st of December. So that'll be next week. We do plan to post it for four weeks, which means it would close around the 18th of January. Uh, in between time, we will have a town hall early in January, just to refresh the public on the project itself, uh, receive any other comments, uh, just to talk again, you know, just with the public, like I say, it's more of a refresher for the town hall, just to go over what we're planning to do and what the project entails. And then the tender will close. We will also at that time, um, gather all the survey, we're going to have a survey as part of our town hall. Um, and we're going to grab all that information, send it into Alberta Environment when we have put the seven day notification period out. And then they've got all the information about what we've done to engage the public again, to refresh everybody's memory about what the project is. And then upon the closing of the seven day notification period, the tender should have closed and then we're uh, okay to award the tender for the project. 
And at that time, we will also have a meeting with council just to go over the tender bids, what the prices were that came in and what options are before council. It's also important to note for this group, uh, since we haven't done an update since February, is that we did in May of 2022, so this last spring, we did acquire the Prairies Can grant funding for our an additional uh, allotment of 140,000 for the project. And so that will also be an update for council in early January, just to let them know that we did get the, the grant. And so then we can put out before council all the different options for building it with the actual updated prices for bids that we receive for the, for the tender. So that's sort of our plan. Um, we're anticipating that should all things go equal, we can award that contract around the 25th of January with mobilization for the project by the 13th of February. Are there any questions? I guess I do, but I don't know. I'm not, oh, sorry. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to clear. I thought, I thought we were, well beyond that. I thought we were expecting tender to be awarded. I could have swore last meeting we were expecting within a couple of weeks. And so I'm kind of surprised that it's now January and, and there was no talk about a, a town hall or anything. They were, they were waiting for, my understanding was we were waiting to have the tender within a couple of weeks and we were gonna be getting going by beginning of January. So have I just got it wrong or? No, it was in a conversation with um, our consultant that we're working with for the project that just had indicated that we will have to refresh the Alberta environment permitting. And it's because of the permitting that there's a bit of a, de of a delay. And so with that, she said, it would, be, it would probably be in your best interest just to do a town hall to refresh everybody on the project and gain any other public consultation at that point. Oh, a comment, I guess. So it's just because of that. It's just because we have to refresh the permitting that was already in place. Um, Winston, do you want to follow up? Yes, I no, just want to follow up uh, just to your point there. In terms of what was shared at the last meeting and in terms of what you're hearing this evening, um, there, there was some information that came to light even to Debbie and I as we took this project over as the two project managers jointly. And the sharing of what Debbie has just shared about the uh, refreshing for the permit would have had to be done anyway at the time if we were going to go beginning of January. So that part was omitted in my view if that wasn't shared. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to that meeting. But if that is the case, this as we are trying to be, as I said, as transparent as we can be, as conformance as we should be, this is every I and T that we're dotting and crossing. So we have we lost time? Uh, not really, because one, we have to do a certain portion of this work during frozen conditions. So, as I said, that may have been an omitted portion if it wasn't shared with you at that meeting as the committee. Hey, John, and then Alice. Oh, no problem. Hey, Alice. Um, the design that was um, given to the committee made public in, I can't remember, early last year, mm -hmm. um, is it roughly the same that, the, yeah, exactly. are there other options included with it or is it simply a, a, just a, another version of what was presented in Alice on February 2022? Yeah. So it, the, the the concept of what was presented, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. yep. uh, the concept that was presented to council was exactly what was mimicked in the end itself. However, what we discovered was the council's motion option three said that it is the north, the south, and the west ramps. When you look at the strong, unfortunately, you don't all have the strong in front of you. So I am for those of you that can see it, the north component, we uh, what council approved was actually you know, they got it as 26.962 meters. Actually, that is up to 10 meters. And that portion, the, the red from the north, is a really uh, what was part of the deletable item that was in the tender. So the reason we did deletable items was for, for one very specific reason, that should council have decided or there was a change because there's so many moving parts over the last couple of months on this project that we had the rates that we could just simply go back to the contract that says we want to pull this out without a cost implication on the contract itself. 
So as you know, once a contractor gives you a price, they say it's going to be X value, and you change the scope, then they want to be compensated because their profits are spread in a different way, and there's many other factors. That being said, that's why you'll see that in the tender, we talk about deletable IP. So back to your question about is the scope generally the same? Yes, it is the same. The defining difference is, is that the what council approved as up to three, versus what is on the paper here is not showing council option and deletable option that's included that makes sense if i may sorry just before i go that uh is it that one or is it purple one well the option three yeah I, the, I think it's the purple one yeah the, uh, Consideration three. It's consider. It's it's the last one actually. It's called the original. Tender. Oh yes. It's called the yes. original tender in there, but it does include a portion that was not part of option three when council made that motion in on in twenty twenty one. Awesome. That's yes, the, that's the one that's representative. And what's going to tender? Right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, so that's what's going to tender, but the portion where it says boardwalk, that last arrow on the north, I'd go up there. Yeah, really go. I'm like Van of White. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm like, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> dating myself. So the only part that was not part of the original motion of council as option three is from about here up. This was a consideration that administration wanted to get a bid on should council move forward to build this section as well so this was not in the original option three option three speaks to a landing and a ramp to get up to the bridge from the north a landing and a ramp to get down from the bridge on the south and a connection on the west to connect it back to this old boardwalk that was option three so when we tendered the project we included a few more deletable, what we call deletable options. So it's just giving it a bit bigger scope so that there were some options for council to consider, you know what, we do want to build that or no, we don't take it out. And to Winston's point, to Mr. Russo's point that when we do this with a contractor and they give these prices, if we didn't include these things with the tender, then if we suddenly said, well, what would it cost to do an extension here? Then they charge us additional funding to come up with that estimate. So when we get it all at once as part of the tender, then we can just take it out, kind of plug and play. I want option A, option B, or option C. So this doesn't quite represent what was council's motion. So just to bear in mind that probably from about here up is a deletable option in the north. And the reason that administration chose to add this to the, to the tender was because we understood that at times in the year when the water is high, you're still going to land in water here. You're still on the gravel path in water. And that doesn't, you know, it's not conducive to access to the ramp. But, you know, we just wanted to make sure we could include that. And we took it back to where we felt it was a bias spot so that we're out of the water so that people can actually access the bridge. But it is a deletable item. It is not part of council's motion to date. Yeah. David, do you just want to add that that dog leg part in the board with deletable? Yeah, so, so this was the other part that is a deletable option in the tender and will be again. It's just we wanted to make sure that we encapsulated the price from the bids for this section, knowing that if council decides not to build this, that we can just simply remove it out of the project. So again, it was put in and then it could be removed and it would be from here this point here to the tie-in point here so that will be something else that will be included in the next tender but it will be a deletable option again up to council to choose if they want to build that or not the other the other consideration so with the new grant funding that's important to bring forward and then again with the new free of funding opportunity that's before us um, that i that i don't know that we've heard yet whether we've got approval this could be reworked with that as well. So that's why it will get tendered as part of the tender package so that we can get some pricing. But this was this would probably be best designed with the free of funding that's available should we get that. So these are just some options. Administration's trying to maintain as many options as possible with the least amount of 
requirement for funding to be for the engineers so that when they make those prices, they can stick right to those prices right away. Any further questions that I can help point out? Yep, we have a, well, we have a few. I'm not sure what they are, but I have Beth and then Alice and then Jan. Um, I got a few. I'll just start with one. One was on that uh, West option. Like it seems to me um, you would almost need to redo the boardwalk to actually even do that West option. And then there might be different design implications. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. With the free funding and the idea that we've got that ability perhaps with the funding from Freya to actually redesign this entire stretch, that would be the that would be the best is if we could redesign this so that it doesn't make a C shape here. It should come straight in or actually build the boardwalk back here a little bit. It should be great. That boardwalk there, the the term is that is you were right beside the the water mm -hmm. and the beavers. So yeah. Yeah, be careful of, of too much redesign there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Alice. Um, can you scroll up a little bit? I think the price tags on that, right? Yeah. So uh, it, I'm just a little confused about the, like the procedure, considering it's the council directed administration to um, generate or. To connect east, west, or sorry, north, south, and west, and for uh, $250,000. So, this $400,000 price tag is still quite a ways above the council approved budget. So, is so, so this is going then, is this going to council for further decision? Yes, it will be. It will be once we retender it and get the new bid prices, it will all go back to, to council to decide. Because at the time we didn't have the additional grant funding. And so then council can choose now with the additional funding that's provided, the original funding for granting that's provided, plus capital funding that's provided, what they want to do and what they want to build. Um, you said additional grant funding. Mm -hmm. has, has the FRIA funding been approved then? No, no. There's an ICIP grant that was already yes. acquired. And then we applied for another grant through Prairies Canada. Okay. Through Prairies Canada that we did acquire. We have gotten approval for that grant. And that's new since it was uh, reported to council in February. We just got approval in this Specifically for the bridge project? Yes. Yeah, it's specifically for this north extension portion of the bridge project. Yeah, I believe Heather has reported that to uh, to the committee that we were that the town was successful in getting that grant to. So, yeah, it just provides more options for for council to consider. Okay, Young. Uh, um, I still, I'm, I think I got the basic gist of what a deletable is, but we scroll down. Sure. If if this doesn't, if they choose not to do this, mm -hmm. is there another alternative that's on the table? The free of funding. So with Smith Way's application for the free of funding, it is to design this entire section and it would link back up to the bridge. So with the free of funding, it gets approved this entire boardwalk will be designed to connect to the bridge. All right. And I don't, I'm not trying to, yeah. but have have you looked at the best point? Like, I, I'm still kind of puzzled that we couldn't have made this work somehow. And I, I'm just curious as to, I guess, why not? It does keep it right in the river. So I know the first time this was presented, Ms. Daly Bamford did speak to that. Okay. But if you guys want to speak to it again. You don't, yeah. I know, no, I mean, it's important that the committee understands why it's like that. I think it was explained pretty well to council. So council has a good understanding of why it needs to dog leg like that and be so long. Oh, I mean, it's the wheelchair access and getting around that. It's, well, I, I'll let you guys explain. I don't want my interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so part of the consideration here was we were trying to ensure that this design met up with the existing viewpoint here. 
And so to do that most effectively, of course, there is some of that with the wheelchairs. This anchors this back into some more uh, out of the water as much. It gives a firmer anchor to anchor it back here. However, um, we also need to consider that this ramp is a little bit high. And so we're trying to get down from this ramp to a landing to a height that can meet this as well, especially if you're going to put wheelchairs on and stuff. Yeah. That's kind of why the dog leg was there, but it doesn't mean it could not be redesigned and a little bit, you know, straightened out a little bit more. Maybe it comes this way or something, but it could be, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be cheaper. Well, well, kind of all around. I, I thank you. I appreciate that. The ramp part make definitely makes sense. Just I, I do remember talking about the grant. I'm curious how much was that an award for? Just to refresh my memory, that Prairie grant. It was awarded for 140 thousand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other additional questions at this point, Alice? I thought Heather Way said that that 140 thousand dollars was going to be used potentially to bring the Beaver Boardwalk and the Brady Project together. That was still a possibility when she first presented it. I didn't realize it was additional funding specifically for the bridge. It was for, uh, if you could scroll down, it's on the smart, the other way, sorry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> this one, it, it speaks to, oh, sorry. My <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, it speaks to this Northern extension part. So from here up, it speaks to building this part of the boardwalk. So it's not part of the bridge ramp, but it is part of the boardwalk, and that's what that hundred and forty thousand was allocated for. Can, can I request that the application be sent to the committee, please? Uh, sure, I can find it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, it's kind of a cold question, but. I don't mean you mentioned you said like last year in August the council made a motion that we should not adjust the bridge heights. I wasn't I can't I don't remember there was really that specific kind of motion from the council. I don't know. Alice, do you have it? Oh, I have it. Just yeah, just to review. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure what you're looking for. Yeah, there, there was that vote, and it was part of the option that was chosen yeah, for the direct administration to proceed. Yeah, I just, I just want to review the, the language. Yes. Yeah. But if we're reviewing stuff, it's already. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. I mean, to go for and look it up myself. Yes, it I have it right here. Yeah. Go ahead, Alice. Um. So there were, uh, four options presented. And council showed, and, and a lot of them had um, discussions about modification to, to the balustrades. And so option three, so the motion on August 24, 2021 was that council proceed with option three, build boardwalk approaches north, south, and west to Maxwell Lake Bridge with limited plaza features as required for connectivity with no modification to the structure or elevation. So my understanding was that that modification was like discussed be in, because of the other options that were presented, which had options for for, for is that am, am I correct in my understanding of how council put worded that was because of the um, other available options having modifications present? Is that? So there was several different options that were presented for for um, bridge uh, tie-in options, but there was also options for um, uh, adjustments to the bridge structure itself. So the decision council made was to go with option three, but with no adjustments to the bridge, which is which is the motion that you just read. What, what points thank you thank you thank Mr. so what was discussed at the time and the option that was brought forward to council was what are the potential for us lowering the bridge current bridge so that we can have a more relaxed grade leading up to it right now you've got staircases on either side north and south and so we looked at that and 
when you went back to AP and all that, they said, well, then you will have to do a hydrotechnical study and all those type of things to ensure that you can maintain the high water mark, whatever that, and maintain the three board. So that's where that conversation led to that we don't adjust any elevations or abutments because we looked at lowering it by 200 more, 250 more. What is the impact to getting better grades? Uh, that conversation has led to that motion being very specific to the current bridge elevation. Else? So just a, a general comment, like it seems like a lot of discussion with this bridge design has to do with grade and the dog leg and the way everything's like, it seems like we're really trying to find a solution to the height of the bridge. Um, and it just, it, I, I personally find it frustrating because I feel like we're trying to retrofit something that was just not designed right from the get go. Your questions or comments? Anybody on Zoom? Any questions, comments? Yes? I'll have one more question. Uh, like, I find that the height to me, how did it, is way over the top. Like, the water would never be that high. So, who, who did that and who's responsible? Like, now, you know, it's like sort of to follow up what Alice was saying is it's a big mistake sitting out there. And uh, like if the water, if you needed it that high, the whole Maxwell apartment would be flooded. So it, can you give me any um, insight on how that was made in the first place? So I'm not sure if anybody from administration has the information to be able to respond to that. That's likely well before either of your times with the organization. Um, also, I, I have to say, I'm not certain the relevancy of that. It is what it is now. So unless there's something to go back and revisit and make changes in, or decisions, I'm not sure what the point is of getting information about why it was done the way that it was. It, it was. Because everybody asks me. <laughs> go out and they say, whoa, well, that's awful. So one here. thing that one yeah. thing that's a pretty good indicator is Mr. Russo indicated is if there were changes to the to the bridge structure, it would have to be re-engineered and go through the sorry, what was the terminology? Oh, the uh, environment AP. AP for for flow rates and water yeah. levels and I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't technical studies. Okay. I don't think anyone is suggesting that the bridge itself be modified. I, I don't no. think that makes sense. I never ever thought that that was a smart idea, except for maybe removing some of the railings so you could see better through it. But that's long gone and open window. Um, the 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 original bridge. I have a picture of it. Was charming because it was pretty much at the water level. The beavers could go under it, they could bring their food under it, and while the gravel path would flood whenever the water got high, the bridge itself never actually flooded until it started degrading and falling into the wetland. Um, I, I've never heard anyone say that that old bridge ever was flooded. That's not something that's in, beside, except for when it was actually broken. It's not something I've heard of. So, <sighs> It, it was, we have this excessively high structure that's difficult for wheelchair accessibility um, because of the grade. And we were talking all about shooting for the stars when it came to for the boardwalk for the free application. But for some reason, we're stuck with the bridge and we have to retrofit. You have to retrofit it, even though it's difficult to access. I, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Are there any other comments or questions? Mr. Marshall, go ahead. Um, from my memory, 
the the height and I, I'm, I can't speak to the bridge specifically, but I know when you build a water crossing, it's a regulatory thing with AEP. Uh, they start at one meter above the water level, regardless of where it's at across a water course. Um, I understand this area has a wider floodplain. That's what the wetland is more or less. But uh, I know if you if, if you could go back in time and rebuild it, they'd still be requiring it to be one meter high. That's what from the things I've read about freeboard, which is preventing it from becoming a problem during flooding. And I know there's a lot of other things there, but uh, I know it's the regulators um, um, place to start at one meter height. And I know they do bridges across the province and there's a lot of different things that can go on and this area is different, but uh, I know that uh, you may end up pretty much where you are now, unfortunately. And thanks, Tom, Jan, and then Alice. Uh, yeah, no one likes the bridge the way it was built, um, but I hope that we keep moving forward and not stop looking backwards. Second of all, just for everyone's record keeping, it's no longer environmental parks, it's environment and protected areas. Well, there, there must, no, I know, I know. There must be another division too. Right? Just changed. No, there's still yeah. land. You guys would sort it. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Some some of them went to the lands. Lands within forestry are all one again. Else, um, just to speak to your point, Tom, um, I understand that there are requirements and regulations for water crossings, but given the uniqueness of this area, um, I'm sure conversation with ADP, if we wanted something more at grade level, would, and given that we have the history of it not flooding and the accessibility for the beavers, um, I'm sure it's just a matter of presenting a case that's well, that's well re reasoned out. And perhaps I'm wrong, but I don't think we should let those kinds of issues stop us from, again, we're the Beaver Boardwalk Committee, and we should try to get what's best for the community and what we want. Uh, we've already made a motion on the top of the moving bridge. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to bring it up. I want a committee to have, I always try and let committee have their full conversation and the full uh, exploring of options and discussion. But Jan's right, there is a motion. And additionally, Council's already made a decision about the future of the bridge, too. Alice? What, what's Council's decision? Not to do anything with the bridge. It's part of that motion that you just read. No adjustments to the bridge. So now, what Council, Administration, and this group are tasked with is finding workable, viable solutions to provide connectivity to the existing boardwalk and the bridge that's there. Yeah. So just to get this straight, um, this this is all going back to council again at some point. Yes. Yeah. It just makes, it, I, and I'm just. It, this is a comment. I'm not meant to anyone, but that sounds like a. a and I, again, I'm not trying to be. A, but it sounds like a step backwards in terms of getting things done. So if I may, it's not coming back to council for consideration of changes. It's it's coming back to council as. Here's the tender price we got, and it's great. It falls within the budget parameters, and we can do all the work. So, you know, do you want to do it? Sure. Or it could be we got the tenders back, and they're over the budget price, so we can still do it, but we'll use both grants to be able to do this work. Or it's really, really over budget. And we don't have enough money to do it all. So what do you guys think about taking out some of those deletable items that Winston and Debbie were talking about? That's what it's coming back to council for, not for potential changes, not for redesigns, nothing like that. It's the extent of the tender is my understanding. Correct. Great. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. Anything further? That's really quick because we're kind of maybe it's a little bit off topic, but 
Maxwell Lake apartments when they built probably would have had to have a, a, a diagram or even with a vertical apartment or apartment protected areas because it's like a deer flood area. So that would exist somewhere. That would have been done. Okay. All right. Is there any further questions, comments, or discussion? Okay. So none, then we will move on to uh, information item 3.2, terms of reference report to council. Uh, this will be really quick. Uh, it was supposed to come, sorry, were you going to speak to that? Did Heather? Did you any Please preface it, and then I have a little bit of administrative information that could supplement okay. what you have. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead, y'all. What, what is this link to Cal meeting video? So that's literally a link to the council's oh. committee of the whole meeting. No, that's okay. That's the lab. That's the committee of the whole meeting where yes. Yeah. Project was pretty no, I just it up at five in the morning. So I wanted to say that they on, so it's not just you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Sorry. Uh, okay, so back to three point two terms of reference report. Uh, so the if you guys will remember back, our, the terms of reference were supposed to come to council towards the end of December for a council decision on uh, modifying terms of reference. That's been postponed now to January twenty fourth. Uh, Ms. Mark, did you have anything to add? Thank you. The postponement to January 24th requires that administration submit the report internally. Uh, it would be January 9th to communications in the CAO. Uh, following what I understand is January 5th is the next meeting of this committee. Um, so ideally maintaining that timeline for when Heather Way returns and then getting the report through for the 24th. Okay. So we don't have to finalize final finalize changes to the terms of reference at this meeting tonight. We would still have time at the January meeting once it's done, but she can still get the report Absolutely. submitted on time. Okay. Good. Okay. So just want to make sure committee has a clear understanding of that. Then we don't have to hammer it out tonight. We can have one more kick at it in January. Okay. Are there any questions or comments about that? Okay, we'll move on to response to maintenance inquiries. Chad. Okay, so I yeah, I uh missed the last two meetings, so I wasn't 100 percent certain on everything here, but um I got a kind of a, a debriefing from Heather. So um parking on Sutherland. So that was brought up by someone, I'm not sure who. Uh I talked to Mac, he's the fire chief. And uh, John, the public works supervisor. So we need to go over the bylaw and see if it is able to be put there. And um, if we can, we can put it on John's desk for completion. It, uh, I, I don't foresee it being a big issue, paying some lines in on uh, Southern but you never know. Um, debris checks, uh, it, we do do them. Kind of more frequent in the summer but it's oftentimes it's just community feedback driven so if there is a lot of trash or whatever that needs to be cleared out we uh it'll get reported to us or if there's it's and uh we'll deal with it that way uh back trail so, so i'm assuming uh the o n m l area back trail garbage uh during maintenance, when we're back there, uh, the guys will pick trash, but uh, it's not obviously it's not an easily easily accessible area for a regular pickup, and that's once again that's community feedback driven. Uh, what I kind of suggested was maybe we could put us put up signage. I know it's not uh, an I you know the perfect solution, but it's almost like shaming people. Sometimes it works, you know, like <laughs> take your garbage out with you kind of thing um that could help uh uh the tower debris as we know there was a plan to get that back up uh it's kind of been you know laid up and 
of the reasons we couldn't put it up right away. So it's kind of migrating all over the place back there. Um, this is definitely a project we can tackle over this winter season, cleaning that up. Uh, the, oh, the bench that is near the tower, um, that is the Lavon family put, or it's, it is a memorial bench for the Lavon family. We have to talk to the family, uh, just let them know that we are going to move it, but it shouldn't be a problem to move it. Um, this one I didn't really know. Like Heather kind of tried to explain it to me, but it's the JK section reclamation. I don't know, like I, she mentioned something about blocking it off because it's. Uh, so committee, do we remember who brought that up uh, at the meeting? Uh, yeah, so I'm not a hundred percent here on what that. It's like a, well, a nesting hab habitat or something. Well, uh, it's not. It's not so much the the boardwalk that JK. It's like the it's the yellow gravel path that's on like directly south of Maxwell Lake. This this area here. Yeah. It kind of has like a lot of peekaboos. Oh, okay. And and it's starting to get worse. I mean, this section is pretty bad too, right where JK is. Like, there's a lot of trails just starting to kind of form everywhere, and the whole shoreline is really starting to get uh, degraded in terms of vegetation cover and so many random paths. So, yeah. so there's just uh, some potential for some reclamation work, okay. just like what was done on the north side. On the north side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, it's something we can work. I don't know if you guys could work together again. Then yeah, maybe yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you don't you don't need so many. Even if you got rid of some of those peekaboos, like right. you know, like it is, yeah. it's just expanding. Yeah, and yeah. and what you guys what happened on the north side is great. They could kind of almost kibosh that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that is what I had. I. I I do, Heather mentioned that uh, um, there may be a question about uh, the work plan for the upcoming season. I don't have anything in place right now, um, but that'll be coming maybe maybe next meeting. I might, uh, it's a bit, I'm just gonna go for a walk around and bring my, uh, bring my Ernesto. Does anybody know Ernesto? <laughs> bring Ernesto and maybe Jesse. And is your favorite employee. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> that's your we told. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a joke. It's in reference to Chad was doing presentations at the uh, <laughs> town Christmas party. So he introduced every employee that he did a presentation to as his favorite employee. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, was, so, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. I don't have a plan in place yet, but uh, it's coming, upcoming. And I think that's all I have. Hey, uh, uh, Alice, did I see your, your hand? Um, it doesn't matter. I would just kind of want to, like, I'm sure your plan is contingent on, like, what happens with the free of thing. Yeah, all, a, a lot of it will yeah, be, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I understand. Makes sense. Okay. Any other questions for Chad? All right. And nothing further. We will move to what's going on with stuff and items. Um, if it's okay with committee, I would actually like to swap 4.1 and 4.2. 4.1 might take a little bit of time. So if we want to do the screw file discussion, uh, and then uh, Debbie and Winston could probably go after that. They don't need to, to stay for the visioning exercise, I don't think. That's okay with committee? Okay, we'll do that. And we will do 4.2 screw file discussion first. Uh, Beth, did you want as your request? Did you want to I introduce it? Sure. Um, yeah, like we're using screw files for the boardwalk, and um, I understand there's different types of screw piles, like like untreated, treated, and stainless steel or something. And um, where we put in untreated in, like Fine Line did a really nice job last year of the, upgrading that one section, but the end of the life of these screw piles, like I really have no information on that. Are they going to be leaching? 
some kind of contaminant into the wetland? What what are the approvals for use of screw piles in terms of uh, regulatory uh, requirements? Like I'd like to really be able to speak to what happens to screw piles at the end, because I really don't know. And everybody just says, oh, it'll be 60 years and stuff. Or, oh, but um, like even Rick Bonner with the living post, he, he checked with DFO and what was like a urban environment at the time to see if his treatment was good. And it was, there is, he was using the correct treatment for wetlands. So I want to make sure that we're using something that will be damaged the wetland in the future. And I'm assuming that you might even have that information at hand, given that, you know, the people that put the tenders together, this would be, you know, in their scope. So maybe that's just why I'm asking the question. Yep. So I'm not sure how much you guys would have that you could share off the top of your hand, you know, understanding that this is that last minute addition to the agenda, if there is anything that you have or want to share. Yeah, sure. So um, just based on my experience, um, different screw piles, um, a screw pile goes in at two meter intervals, and then you can extend it beyond that. In our case, we want to extend the screw pile beyond the first step. Um, the reason for a screw pile is it's non-intrusive. It's unlike a different type of pile that you depend on end bearing. You would have to have extrusion through putting a casing in, then you need a concrete chute coming in through concrete, which is much more environmentally unfriendly. Um, so screw piles have been, since 1836, screw piles have been used for quick install or longevity, and I'll get to the environmental component in a moment. Um, you can take them up to 40 meters of depth. Um, if you want to research it, uh, it's a general by Alexander Mitchell, back in 1836, designed this. And what he did was, is that he wanted to be less intrusive, he wanted to be environmentally friendly, and he wanted to ensure that it can be conducive to any types of soil. What we have discussed and what will be um, very clear in the tender would be that our piles aren't, I mean, we talk about stainless steel, we talk about steel piles, we talk about the um, corrosion of a steel pile if it's not treated through hot dip galvanized. And what we would be putting in, we want to be careful not to be prescriptive to the contractor, otherwise the liability lies on the municipality or the agent, but we will put it under a very uh, narrow scope where we'll say that we hot dip galvanized pile is what is recommended because we wanting to eliminate or mitigate environmental uh, issues that could occur over year one to year 75. Now, under the soil conditions that we have, in the, you look at the boreholes, number one over to number five, you'll see that the majority of our soils um, is basically uh, not as clay as what I thought. It's really you know, muskeg, and then you go down to the sandy soils, and then you go down, you do cobble down at about eight, six or eight meters of depth. So that is very good soil for screw piles because screw piles does not need a clay type, though it can withstand clay materials, it will, doesn't give it time to breathe like in a sandy soil, which is bring it down to a granular level. Um, because what happens is water should be able to move around the pile. There should be no hydrostatic pressure that can you know, cause the pile to wanting to move laterally up or down as well. And so as a result, we are very careful about what we are prescribing. No, not over prescriptive, but it will be a pile that can stand at least 75 years. And the reason why I can stand behind 75 years is because of the soil type that we have, and we're going to go below this, the cross depth in this case. Um, we should have no heaving. Um, again, if you read the current contract or tender, it speaks of that it's going to have to be an Alberta professional engineer that designed it. The contractor will have that design. It will be stamped, and then it will be certified by our engineers. And then upon finalization of the install, it will be signed off by that same engineer, making sure that all the environmental aspects or concerns that there may be are taken care of. If you do a little research for yourself, you'll see that hot depth galvanizing with the right soils will give you that 70 to 75 year life span. Um, so that I'm just talking from experience. I haven't had a chance to talk to the engineers, but we can put a narrative together and share it with the committee at your convenience. Okay, let's see. Uh, Alice? Um, hot dip galvanized, is that a link coding? 
that, that we have some yeah okay yeah um and do we do we do we know anything like are, are these coatings susceptible to leaching uh no because what happens is that's why it's hot dip when they get hot dip it's like you know when you have lava that is flowing out out of a current um, volcano that's happening you get this pitted sort of seam on the on the ground this is exactly what happens with the galvanizing. So leaching is not possible. So all the oxygen is taken out of the mix and it doesn't allow it to penetrate into the, the shaft itself. Because one of the things with screw piles, what you will find is that there's the tendency that the ground movement, if at all any, is wanting to push the pile up or pile down. It's not a, a, a load bearing, it's a load bearing pile, but it's not a refusal pile. So what I'm trying to say is that if it was a refusal pile, then you won't have that downward thrust having any effect. But because this is a screw pile, you will have these movements that would want to affect it. So with the galvanizing, with the pittedness of that galvanizing after it's been oxidized, you will not have that ability for friction because we'll have greater friction to the existing soils. Okay. Yes. So what happens after 75 years? <laughs> like, how, how do you get them out? What do they look like? Uh, are they broken in half? Like, I mean... Yeah, I mean, at, at, at 75, it's a good question. I mean, I've never had to do it in my 75 years. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that being said, uh, I mean, you basically will extrude it by, of course, at that time, technology will probably much more, but you will have to extrude it. Maybe what will happen is and just, just me putting on my engineering hat. You'll put a casing in it and then it'll extrude it. And oh. then you will see what is in that casing that may have to be pumped out that is potentially corrosive. At the time, so that is what I would recommend if I'm the guy that's still around 75 years later. Yeah. Great. Uh, is there anything further for discussion on the screw pile item? Okay, if there's nothing further, so thank you, Winston and Debbie, for joining us tonight. And I can uh, answer some of the questions that maybe has. Well, we will share the date of the town hall as soon as we've got that book too, in case someone wants to come on the board. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. So now we'll backtrack to 4.1 uh, EOC vision revision exercise. Fantastic. All right, thank you all for the opportunity. I received clear direction from Heather Way regarding how she wanted to facilitate this exercise and therefore have presented the following handout. It is available in the chat for our members joining by Zoom. To begin, we're only looking at the first page regarding the vision statement. So we have one that currently exists in the draft term of reference. And then we have another that was provided by yourself, Alex Paquette, thank you for the email. The way this activity is going to work, I'll provide a little bit of time for all members of the committee to review both statements. We will do a vote on the preference of the committee members regarding the first two statements. Then committee will be broken up into two groups, depending on who is in session and who is in Zoom, and they will have an opportunity of 10 minutes to craft another statement with any of the terms or keywords that they feel are missing. And then we will vote between the first preference from the two that currently exist and the two that were created by the groups here this evening to have a final for this draft terms of reference vision statements, at which point any further changes to the vision statements will be passed by resolution of the committee. Are there questions? No, is this final vote going to be happening today. So for the, pardon me, if I may, through yeah. the chair. So for the vision statements, to get a draft that the committee is satisfied with, once again, this item can return on January 5th for final revisions of the terms of reference to get the report before council. So no, not tonight. Not tonight. Well, well, but it ideally, would, it ideally. looks like it is hammered out as possible, though, so that there's a good draft version to come to the committee on January 5th. Yes. And that will make the group more efficient before we have to finalize the report internally on the 9th. No, I'm picking it up. Uh, I just wanted to. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Excellent. In that case, I propose three minutes to review the first two that are on the pages before you. And then I'll ask the chair to facilitate a vote before we move on to the second portion of the activity. Of course. 
Thank you. Are you going to hang out, Chad? Chad usually stays to the bit, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, just for your reference. And I may have given you two notes on my apologies. Do you have it? Thank you. Yeah, I don't see. So the idea is to vote kind of between one of these two as the base and then make modifications from that. Yeah, one of these two is the base. Okay an opportunity to draft their own and then voting between whichever was successful first and then the ones that were drafted to have finalized base and then any revisions to that base passed through resolution of the committee. Okay. Has everybody done reviewing the two uh, versions of uh, vision statement? Anybody need more time? Okay. Does the process make sense? Does that sound logical to everybody? Any questions or concerns? But yeah, I, mean, I understand. I think it's a great way of doing it. I just don't, I myself personally, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to draft up something tonight. But mm -hmm. That having just seen the way that this is going to be done, and I didn't know if if Allison's moved, and I just didn't know if that was going to be one and two, and we're going to, which is a great way of doing it. But I just, considering how brain dead I am right now, I <laughs> don't know if I'm going to actually be able to draft something out of these two tonight. That's my concern. You asked. If I may, through the chair, yep. does it address your concern to know that you'd be working in the group of three that's present for the committee to one be able to draft? And then I'll put them in a breakout room so they can have a discussion. And then the three of you can work on a draft as well. And then we have bases to vote from. We can change process if you yeah. guys don't want to do it a different way. That's perfectly fine. It... Was... Well, I guess I'm curious to get a group's feedback on the one I sent out. I didn't get any emails back or any phone calls or anything. So, like, a, a little bit of feedback would be nice. Okay. Just, does that how committee wants to do it? Do we want to just discuss what's before us or do we want to vote on the, the one we prefer? How do we want to do that? Well, I'd like to see some discussion before the vote. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any thoughts on, uh, well, either option, I guess, current version or the version provided by Alice? Yeah. You know no offense. Um, I think Alice is, is very well written. It would be great on a pamphlet. Um, but I do think it's wordy. And some of it, I don't know if it's just applicable to a, a vision statement. Um, I am a little bit lost with the peaceful manner and encouraging understanding, understanding of what necessarily. And I, I'm just saying it could cause confusion and lead to an interpretation. That we're doing. Um, whereas number one, it's not as beautifully, it's not as nice, it's nowhere near as nicely written, obviously, but it cuts to the gist of, of things. The one part that I really don't love about number one is the the fiscal responsibility aspect, but I understand that the counselors who wrote that original one, they think fiscally in a lot of ways. So that's where I'm leaning is, you know, Alice is, is, is nicely written, but I just don't, 
I think that there's a lot of stuff in there that it does, it just doesn't help cut to the jade just of what the vision statement is, and it, it can lead to different interpretations and maybe even misunderstandings. And that's where I'm at. Okay, thanks, Jan. Uh, anyone else? Any comments on either of the versions? Beth? Um, the first one is very succinct, but uh, in a lot of ways, it could be applied to almost any of our. We've got really nice parks in Hinton, and it actually could simply. I'm not sure if it really pulls out the uniqueness of the Beaver Boardwalk as a separate from you know some of our other um, park areas. Okay. Anyone else? All right. How would can, how would committee like to proceed then? Do we want to. Vote on either of the current versions. Do we want to start from scratch, draft a brand new one, pick the one you like the best and modify it? What do we what would we like to do? Man, I would love to hear more viewpoints. Sorry, I spoke of a turn. No, that's okay. So this is an exercise we have to complete. So we need we need some kind of a path forward. We're kind of giving it, I, I'm giving committee the opportunity to voice how they want to do it. But if there isn't a consensus of committee to do it in a particular way, we'll go back to the suggested way that uh, th that Heather brought forward. John? I think if I could find a way, and I agree with Beth, on her statement there, if there's a way that we can, you know, I, I, I agree with Beth on what you said there, but it, it is a unique, if we can, even that word, we can just, the Beaver Boardwalk is a unique, unique, loved, you know, somehow set it aside from our other parks and areas to make sure that, you know, but that's what really what we're talking about here. Um, that's what our, I'm leaning towards. I still like the succinctness enough about it. I like the fact that it includes outdoor recreational uh, and the educational, obviously. And I'm still having issues with that fiscally. Okay. Anyone? Should we vote? Alice? Yeah, since no one's saying, like, I think, yeah, we should just vote on one and two and then split up the draft, like you said. I don't think, honestly, John, I understand you're tired, but I, I like, I, I hear you when you say you think it could be a little more succinct, um, just like a little, like, tighten it up a bit, right? Which is what you're getting at with, with this one. So, like, I we can do that in a couple of minutes, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm I'm for that. I'm fine with that. I I would support that actually. I don't know what the rest of the committee thinks. I uh, was lots of opportunity to speak to it. So unless there's any opposition, I think that's a good way forward. We can vote on whether option one or option two is the preferred starting point, and then we can take that and draw in components from completely outside or from the other version and make one that that committee's happy with. That sound reasonable? Can those guys hear us? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We're all smiling, so I'm assuming you're all watching like the team of the boss is already in it. Okay. All right. So uh, we will vote then. And who has a preference for number one, which is the current version? Please indicate. Okay. Uh, that's three for that version. And for uh, option two, one provided by Alice, please indicate. And that's that's four. Okay, so we're going to use, we'll use option two as our starting point. And then we can, we can modify from there. We can add, take away, draw in completely outside stuff. What do we want to do? 
if I may propose, take the 10 minutes in group um, and recognizing the fatigue and the hour, potentially instead of something from scratch, just resolutions for the committee to debate on particular changes you would like to option to. Else? Yeah, I would like to hear if anyone else, like Jan made some really good specific points about statement number two, if there are things that people specifically want changed, um, if you could speak up, that would be really helpful. So do we want to do the group exercise then? Like, I would rather group. I, like, mm -hmm. Well, I, but if we have the general feedback first, it'll make it easier in group, I think. No, I know, but she's suggesting that we split it into two groups. Yes. I'm suggesting we just stay as one group. Oh, I see. I think. Especially because they're not dodging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can. I, yeah, go ahead. Sure, I, I can offer one one thing. If we're talking about option two, the uh, uh, my only thing with it is, is it's beautiful. Um, it sure sounds a lot like where I work. <laughs> like it's pulled from like the the Parks Canada mandate, and I, I maybe just like to play with the wording a little bit so that. It doesn't sound like the Parks Canada mandate. I don't know if that matters to anyone else, but uh, I can't even articulate why that's a bad thing. It should be an awesome thing. <laughs> it just maybe something. It just seems really. It, it, it's it's word for word quite close to our, the national park mandate. So I just thought playing with the words a little bit would be nice to do. Change it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's not a real valid concern. <laughs> it's just <laughs> something a little bit more original they hinted. It's just, I don't know. So. Okay. okay, thanks, Thank Kevin. Beth? I was, I was going to say, people come from Jasper to our boardwalk, so maybe we should even be more. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> straight up stealing. <laughs> Perhaps we should all aspire to be parks. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's probably not a real concern. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to be accused, like, we don't want to get in trouble for plagiarism here, but um, no, I intentionally took it from the, the parks mandate because I really like, like, you know, obviously they spent a lot of time on that and the wording that they came up with, with the, you know, future and present generations, like, I think is really, I, I, would, I would like to keep that part at least. Um, I think it's really, um, like, uh, it, it really captures stewardship. In a nice way. So, Heather, if there's um, suggested changes that are supported by committee, are you capturing that or? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Heather will capture any of the proposed changes. So, committee, uh, any other comments or questions or discussion or proposed changes to option two? Alice? So, I kind of shorten it up pretty quickly here. Um, I, I, looking at it again, I mean, you write something like this out and then you come back to it and you always know, make it better, right? Um, so that in a safe and peaceful manner, encouraging understanding, appreciation, enjoy, enjoyment in ways that preserve, like that's all kind of, that's not really saying anything in a lot of ways. Like I wanted to have the word safe in there because that was in the original one. Um, so I think we can kind of nix that whole bit and then bringing in, Yon's um, suggestion for unique. I've got another one here that I'll read out slowly and hopefully, hope maybe this will get us slightly in the better direction, but I don't think we need to write it out right now. Um, so I'm thinking the Beaver Boardwalk represents the heart of Hinton's natural heritage, bridging the gap between urban and wildland by safely bringing citizens and visitor into the unique Maxwell Lake wetland and preserving the ecological integrity for future and present generations. I just let Heather so she can get all that, and then everybody can read it too. But... Can I capture that, Alice, especially at the end? Preserving the ecological integrity for present and future generations. Yeah. Preserving is spelled. No, you mean it's spelt wrong. It's, it is spelt right. It's just the way that's it. It it's 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 no, it's tracked. She is. It looks really silly. You can't cross through an E. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I just I spelled it wrong. Yeah, I did too. I can't spell. I, I, well, like anything else. 
<laughs> okay, so everybody have a look at that proposed change and then, uh, you know, did you want to comment on it? I appreciate Alice's quick editing, um, but I, I still, I would like to see some inclusion of more about what it's meant to be, including an out, outdoor recreational and educational experience. Uh, you know, the recreation is obviously important to me since I'm not a seat on the table, but the educational part has always been something that we've sold the one of the selling points for the thing, including back to the very beginning. Yes. Um, the outdoor recreation can be a whole lot of things. Like that's which what keep it specific. Probably, I mean, specific, like, specific. No, but it, that may not actually fit into the Beaver Boardwalk because the boardwalk was designed to bring people in to bridge that, like the front part, like the urban to the wildland, so that people can learn and appreciate what a natural environment is. That that was the point of the whole thing. And people are going to walk their dogs and do their daily walks and all of that stuff. But, but yeah, but recreation can be a whole lot of other things too. So I don't know. Wonder about. Okay, I think probably a good way forward then would be to seek consensus of committee to make the change so that it reads as it currently is, but with the understanding that's not the end of it. We can continue editing and modifying beyond that. So this is just consensus if committee's happier with this version or with Alice's original version. So I'll give everybody a minute to read through it and uh, decide whether they like this or the previous version better. We'll take a vote on that and then we'll open the floor up for uh, modifications again. So you need a motion now? Um, I'll, we'll just call it the question. I just want to make sure everybody's had time. Does anybody need any more time to uh, review the two options? Okay. All right. So we'll by show of hands, who uh, supports the current redlined version that you can see on the screens? Uh, all in favor, please indicate. That is five in favor. Uh, and who is in favor of the uh, original version that uh, Alice put forward? Please indicate. It's one, so yeah. So we're going to go with this version for now. So if we can rewrite that without the red lines, mm -hmm. okay. All right, we'll open the floor again for any additional changes or modifications to our, our uh, working vision statement. Trevor? Uh, I would propose uh, starting replacing preserving with balancing the ecological integrity with educational experience for present and future generations. I do think it's a balance more between with the educational and the ecological rather than uh, outdoor rec. Can you just repeat that Trevor so Heather can make sure Heather's uh, capturing what you're saying? Balancing the ecological integrity with educational experience for present and future generations. Um, 
I'm I'm a little kid. I'm hoping you can clarify a little bit for me, Trevor. Are, are you like is it the balance between ecological integrity and education? No, no. Um, like the educational experience. So every educational experience, say like putting up signage or or including that extra piece down along the riverbanks, that is impacting the ecological balance, I suppose, by choosing to have that specific educational experience there. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. I, I, my understanding of that is uh, like the most or the least ecologically damaging thing would be to not have a boardwalk there at all. But that doesn't promote the educational aspect at all, because the point of it is to be able to get out there on the wetland and be able to observe and be able to read the signs. So, so I kind of understand the balance between maintaining an ecological integrity and having the educational experience to go with it. Alice? So to me, to me, there it's like the educational opportunity is is and and the ecological integrity are intrinsically linked because fostering appreciation for the wetland is what is going to cause people if there was no boardwalk there people wouldn't love it the same way they do and if some development came along and decided they wanted to fill it in well it's probably never going to happen but say with the boardwalk present you have a much bigger chance of the community saying no we want to keep this wetland so i don't see it as being a balance between having the boardwalk and having ecological integrity. I think the boardwalk actually brings ecological integrity to the community in a really, that's part, that's why, that's why it's so cool. Like it, it it's a very existence, it's what fosters, foster, steward, stewardship. So is, is your sticking point then the word balancing? Yes. So if it said something like, I was thinking along the same lines of Trevor. I was thinking we could add the the outdoor recreation educational experience at the end here. Like I, I do think it fits in there. Um, I'm not hoping is that that was the direction you wanted to see, Trevor. Uh, I was hoping to exclude outdoor rec, uh, just because. Okay. We, yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask Trevor why he wants to exclude outdoor rec? Uh, yeah, I don't, um, yeah, I'm unneeded. Um, we're, uh, the boardwalk is actively preventing all kinds of outdoor rec. So like we're, we're obviously trying to exclude uh, ATV use and watercraft use. Um, uh, there's not a whole lot of inclusiveness for, for the skating and whatnot. Uh, we, we purposely kept the, the trail narrow to 1.2 to keep, to make bikers dismount. Um, so by saying outdoor rec, I think we're, we're opening up to everything. Whereas if we exclude that, we can just focus mainly on walking and, and whatnot. Which is rec. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one portion of rec. <laughs> well, it's a big portion. It's, it, for a lot of people in town, that's the only recreation they get. You know, for a large, for probably a major portion of the population, walking and hiking is their recreation. I'm just sorry. I'm just it's a it's a way of attracting people to it. And I understand what you're saying. Um, I just I look back to Rocky Warren. He did a, a French documentary on the making of the boardwalk, and he ended it by saying, you know, it's a recreational feature, and it showed him in tight spandex riding a mountain bike across the boardwalk. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, Alice? Um, I, I think, like, I, I don't think it, it needs, the, the word recreation needs to be part of the vision. I think, um, you know, like, I think, I'm pretty sure it's mentioned elsewhere in the terms of reference. And it is a bit of a, a broad definition. and. 
I think like there's definitely a big recreation component, but because the word recreation encompasses so many other things like rock climbing and yada, 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 like Trevor was saying, like, you know, motorized boats and stuff. Um, just, just keeping that word out, like, because when we read recreation in terms of the boardwalk, it's bird watching and wildlife viewing and walking and yeah. <laughs> riding your bike. Yeah, yeah no, I, 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 but, but it means a different thing. You say pedestrian recreation. So before so we get to, the word is so before vague, we get too like, far down the discussion regarding the educate or the, the uh, recreational part, I think it'd be a good idea to hammer out. The, this part and get something that committee agrees with and then we can maybe move towards talking about whether we want to include a, a recreational component or not uh, if that makes sense i do have, I, have, I have a suggestion to just sorry i just want to throw it out there and then we can talk about it tell me tell me you hate it um so my suggestion would be that it uh, would say uh, into the unique Maxwell Lake wetland, maintaining ecological integrity while offering educational experience for present and future generations. Yeah, I, I actually was just drafting the pretty much the exact same thing, but I had it flipped like um, Maxwell Lake wetland providing um, an educational experience while preserving the integrity of the uh, integrity for present and future generations. Yep. So, yeah. You know, um, this spine. Yep. Can um, I just talk a few things? Yep. Sorry, I lost track of where we were. So, Kevin, Kevin, Tom, and then Alice. Yep. Trevor, did you have your hand up too? No. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Okay, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to, add, first of all, just say really quickly, I think personally what I really like about where it's at right now, the strongest part of it is that, you know, um, we're identifying essentially that, that the Beaver Boardwalk is the most important place in town. Um, that first two sentences of it is is really strong and clear and, and really states the purpose of what we're kind of driving towards, right? So I like that a lot. Um, if we want to try and combine educational experience with recreation, uh, in the Parks Canada mandate, we we use protect and present natural significant examples, blah, blah, blah. So the word protect, of course, the ecological integrity and present includes the educational and enjoyment of, you know, special places, right? So you can, if you, if you wanted to steal those words, I mean, protect or present are the words we use to sort of identify that blend of how people use and identify special places. So, you know, I just thought I'd offer that. And then just on, on a, dare I throw in one more idea. Um, I thought, you know, as opposed to making one big long-winded sentence, I mean, it could be two sentences. So you stop at the end of Maxwell Lake wetland and then state the, the golden objective. It's a small difference, but, just breaks up that you have clearly said this is the most important, you know, small park wildland in town. Here's how we're taking care of it as a structure. But, uh, but yeah, overall, I mean, I like where it's going. Um, I'm comfortable with it as it stands, but I just thought I'd offer those if they're helpful. Thanks. Point of order through the chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, thank you for your patience. Sorry to jump the line. I would like to suggest that if we're treating these suggestions as friendly amendments to what's on the table for a resolution, we only make a few changes before doing another vote. This will just help me keep the draft clear. And otherwise, if you're going to present suggestions um, like you just did, Kevin, where you say, okay, let's do a full stop. Um, let's include the words protect and preserve. Please do so in the form of a resolution um, rather than just a suggestion because otherwise I don't see it getting picked up. Um, and just being cognizant of the fact that it's eight o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Tom? Um, I guess if you're going to include recreation, the words low impact recreation could be included. I, I don't know if that's a catch all or, or that solves the problem people have with it, but just, just an idea. Hey, thanks, Tom. 
Uh, okay, per Heather's suggestion that if somebody likes that wording or wants to change it to something else, please make a motion and then committee can decide if they support that or not. Yeah. Can we make a motion on your wording then? Yep, you can, yep. So that would be maintaining ecological integrity while offering educational experience. Okay. Okay, Jan's move to change, modify the wording to that, again, with the understanding that we're not done yet. Uh, all those that support the red line wording, please indicate. Okay, so that's six, uh, and, and against. I, I just don't like the word being Okay, so that was carried six to one. Uh, and you, you can change it, like Kevin suggested, yeah, no, using good. preserve and protect, and I like those words too, so. Yeah. Can, can I have a minute? Think. Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure, yeah, take all the time you want. Maybe any, uh, any suggest, oh, sorry, I'm waiting for Heather to get that. Hey, committee, this is our current working version. Any other changes we want to make to that? There were, there were some suggestions about putting the recreational component in there. We certainly can do that if anybody has a, an interest in throwing that forward as a suggestion. Uh, Kevin, not to put you on the spot, but I, re I I did like both your suggestions about making it two sentences and incorporating preserve and protect in there. If you had a if you had a thought about how to do that, that'd be I, I'd welcome to debate it anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to toss out my idea, and I'm just yeah, you know, it's spitballing literally. So it would be Maxwell Lake wetland period. This low impact recreational area protects ecological integrity while presenting educational experience for present and future generations. Uh, you said, is that what you said, or did you say protects ecological integrity while presenting education? Protects ecological integrity. Well, oh, I'm is, sorry, I missed that you put protects in there. My bad. <laughs> it's hard to read. I always sit here. It's way far away from the screen, but I sit here so I can see everybody. Mm -hmm. is, this is, this, it was in my email, but I'm just remind like, um, Rick Bonner, the way he laid out, because he did use the word recreation in his objectives in 2008, um, ex and, and like it was talking about expanding the, like continuing to build the boardwalk. So expand the public recreation project located at the edge of town in a natural wetland forest complex in the urban wildland interface is how he had his objective. So I'm just putting that out there so that people have the wording in mind. Okay. So there is a consensus request to change the wording to this though. So if we could just try and keep the conversation on that until we make a decision on it, and then we can open the floor up again. Should it have like, after presenting in this one, have like word and a and, like an educational experience? Thank you. Okay with that, Jan? Good, friendly amendment. Okay. Thanks, Jan. That's to me, the recreation is inherent. The kind of recreation is inherent in what you're offering. So, like that's why I was saying you don't even need to say that because you're already offering to bridge the gap between urban and wildlife. And how are you going to do that? You're going to be walking on there. So, I guess that's where you know you start defining that. Defining that it's really it offers you that the, the recreation like. Basically, walking, bird, walk, bird watching, all of that. Like, that's how you're doing that. 
So I, I guess I just don't see the point there. Because it's, it's embedded. In, I, I, think, in, I totally agree. But I, I'm yeah. thinking of, I'm looking at it from some someone who's maybe not of recreational or they don't really think that they are and they're reading this and it's just like a buzzword it's kind of like oh recreation right i need some of that sure yeah. uh, you don't need any, any other comments kevin yeah yeah just further to your uh, your comment before there albert sorry i didn't have a chance to jump in i just thought um you, you could move uh presenting like, I mean, I don't have the ability to, to type here, but I would move it to uh, low impact recreational area protects and presents the ecological integrity for present and future generations because the ecological integrity is is the whole package of that whole area, right? It's the, it's the lake, it's the wetlands, it's the pond, you know, the, the wildlife, all of that is, is kind of included in the concept of ecological integrity. So um, you've got low recreation, impact recreation in there so you've got those folks being addressed um, you've got the preservation of the the natural environment in there you've got the, the enjoyment and educational component um, kind of packaged in presents and uh, yeah you've got that really nice clear definition of the importance of the beaver boardwalk to the community is a first clear sentence that would be my friendly amendment and sorry, that's long-winded. <laughs> um, you know, I generally prefer to have some time to workshop this with some others and come back. But yeah, it's it's late. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I retract. Sorry, I just had a trouble getting in. I, I'd speak to it. I, I actually liked it better before. I find that wording a little bit awkward, but. That's just my opinion. Anyway, that was a friendly amendment request. So you can accept it or you can keep it. You don't have to accept it. You can keep it the way it was if you want to. Anyone else want to speak to it? It's hard with all of these uh, editing uh, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I I like the, the separation. I like the separation. It, 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 ecological it, it, integrity and and presents educational opportunities. Yeah. yeah, I think as much as I like his help, I know he's a professional. Uh, um, <laughs> I would probably reject the friendly amendment just because of what Albert's saying, and also just it starts sounding a little bit army-ish. <laughs> <That's laughs> <presented. laughs> okay, so can we take it back? It was before Kevin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I was just trying to address your your point from before. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Um, Alice? So my issue with it right now is I do like the idea of separating into two separate sentences, but starting with this, just, you know, it ain't going to fly with me starting a sentence with this. Um, just the word this is the first, and it just, um, I also, I don't, I don't like the low impact recreational because it's such a, it's such a big chunk of division now, and it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm still it's three words. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, but you have to um, the school is right. Yeah. So I, I would, I like, I've got something a little bit different, more along the lines of what Albert was saying before. Um, so I would personally just vote to, um, reject yeah, let, let's and let, go back to, yeah, let's, let's subcommittee make a decision on this first. Again, the door's not closed. We can change it again. We can massage it some more. We can whatever. Or if they don't like this, we can have a different, different option. Um, okay. So committee, uh, all those in favor of the proposed change that you see redlined, please indicate. Opposed? No, no, in favor. In favor. Okay. Uh, so that's four opposed, uh, three. So that that is carried four to three. Okay, I'll open. Oh, sorry, we'll let Heather get that so that it's done redlined, and then we'll open the floor up again for additional suggestions. Okay, committee. What else do we want to do with our vision statement?
Ellis? Okay, so don't write it down just yet, but I'm thinking if we had the second sentence is something more like by providing an educational recreational experience, um, we encourage the um, preservation of ecological integrity for future and present and future generations, something sort of in that realm where you link the two, like where you're really pointing out that, you know, it's the, it's the educational recreation that is what's going to lead to the preservation. And I can hammer something out if people are interested in, in that point of order, if I may. Um, please just read it so I can type it. And then if we have it on the screen, I think especially because it's a late hour, it'll just help us grapple. And you're coming up with some suggestions that otherwise I think people want to engage with. And it's kind of hard when everything's just written off the page. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I would so, agree. If there's a change that you want to see made, I think it's best to say I move to change it so it says this. Okay. I move to change it so it says the second sentence. Mm -hmm. So there's period after wetland now. Um, so I would be rewriting just the whole sentence. Yeah. Um, by providing an educational experience, um, <laughs> my lost yeah. is. Um, I think you said providing an education. educational and recreational yeah. experience. But, yeah, you can focus. Okay, so by providing a recreational, an educational and recreational experience. Yeah. It was something about, I think that's it's how you just protect it. it uh, it uh, thereby protects. We ensure the ecological integrity for present and future generations. But we got to change we ensure because that's not quite right. Yeah. Um, The ecological integrity is maintained for as future generations. Yeah. You won't maintain that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, I would I would use preserve probably instead of maintained. Yeah. Use Kevin's <laughs> Oh, and we can change, um, we can say by presenting an educational recreational, if we want it, <laughs> instead of providing, to, yeah, if we want to use Kevin's, yeah, Kevin's that's wording. Better. That works. So. Huh. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's okay. Are you happy with that, Alice? If you want to use Kevin's wording. I'm just saying you said then you would replace preserved with protected or protected. I just use the, the one presenting um the ecological uh, is protected for future and instead of preserved yeah. it'd be protected. Yeah. You it, have to use it, both as words? Like, <laughs> whatever you want, it's your your direction, whatever you want. Um, I prefer per per preserved. Cool. Okay. All right. Are you happy with it? It is yeah. okay. All right. Any discussion from committee? I just like to say I, I I like that it's unique to this group. So that's that's nice to see. Yeah. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. We'll call it to question then. All those who prefer the new uh, redlined version, please indicate. Okay, and anyone who prefers the old version? None, so that was seven, was seven in favor. Oh. Yeah, there's, we have some slow voters in the room. <laughs> All right, so there's our current working vision statement. Is there anything else that anyone would like to see added or omitted? We need some change responsibility there. <laughs>
Oh, can I speak to that? So as, as a member who was on the original uh, Beaver Boardwalk Committee, it, it was important at that time that it defined that it was going to be done in a fiscally responsible way. And I, I can tell you why. That was in direct response to the proposal that ISL brought forward with the concrete walkway that was you know, wide enough to land a 747 on it. Uh, many at that time didn't feel, although that would have been, you know, the Taj Mahal of boardwalks, we didn't feel it was either fiscally responsible or environmentally responsible. And that's part of the reason why the fiscal, fiscal responsibility and minimal uh, environmental impact wound up in the first vision statement. I think we're well beyond that though. I personally don't feel that there's a need to have the fiscally responsible component in there anymore. That's up to committee. That's just me, my perspective, why it was in there in the first place. I like this judge. I, I was just to say I like this one. Yeah. No? I will retract it. It was a joke. I know it was. <laughs> I know it was, but I wanted to speak to it because it has come up a few times. So I just wanted to express why it is there. No, I, and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I just <laughs> I always thought it was funny because it's like, well, were you gonna be fiscally irresponsible? Like it just seems like a given that any I, yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. But it's it's a guiding document for anybody that Sure. Anyway, yeah. And, yeah, I already spoke to it. Beth? I just, that ISL document was so way over the top, I could see having to deal with it in, in the manner that you described, because it, it really was not um, appropriate or for the size of the area for, for, for the purpose. Else? Do you feel, Albert, that the division as it stands would still stand a bit as a barrier between something like that coming again again because like that was the intention right including that wording so does that i think it does i think by having the the part about uh preserving the uh ecological integrity i think that yeah that, that encompasses we're not looking to pave it over so, Hey, committee, is there anything else? Any other changes? Are we content? And we can be content for now, too. We can take another opportunity at the January meeting to tweak it a little bit if we want to. We just want to get it so we're comfortably close. Okay, last call for any further changes. Okay, if there's no further changes, we will seek consensus from the committee to adopt this vision statement as our draft vision statement moving forward. All those in favor? Okay, well, that was carried unanimously. No problem. Thank you. I need to go to bed. <laughs> All right, is there anything further from the committee regarding the uh, vision revision exercise? So are we on 5.1 here? We are moving to 5.1, yep. Uh, Heather, are you taking this one too? Yes, I believe so, thank you. Okay, so for the remaining 15 minutes of the meeting, we were going to review and approve previously submitted changes to the draft terms of reference. So the email that went out earlier this week with the four attachments, there is a second draft that Heather prepared uh, in accordance with the resolutions that were passed at the previous committee meeting. Um, so once again, endeavoring to get this as close as feasible for January 5th so that we're finalizing before we take to Committee of the Whole on January 24th. Therefore, so sorry. No, I just want to clarify here. I see some confused looks and paper grabbing. It's basically a draft version of the terms of reference that's incorporating all the changes that were directed by committee last time we met. When was that sent? Yeah. Um, with the agenda, I think. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. It was part of the agenda. There was like yeah. somewhere highlighted. There was a word document. Yeah. But I get the agenda. I'm missing stuff. And I swear to God, I printed everything on the agenda email today. Mm -hmm. 
So it, yeah, it's so, a, no, I'm missing. It's a terms. It's a copy of the terms of reference, but it's got um, some highlighted sections and some comments. It's a word document. That is the one, right? I want a copy of the. No, I don't oh, yeah, of course. Sorry, I thought I was just sharing my screen in general. Heather's going to put it up. But basically, it incorporates all the changes that were directed by committee. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it previously. So, That's not my man. Well, was Heather's. <laughs> Was Butter Heather's suggestion <laughs> to see any other changes or what was the purpose of the review? The scope came up, if I may speak freely, mm -hmm. um, defining where it is in definitions, moving it to um, section two of the terms of reference. Uh, so jumping to definitions for scope, um, deciding whether or not boardwalk was to be defined. Um, and then having the definition currently as a natural and built environment within Maxwell Lake uh, as outlined in Appendix C. Appendix C being this map. And on the second page of the document that I handed out, I have provided the group with what I found this afternoon. So the agreement for Hinton Disc Golf Association between the town Different because we're not speaking about a committee. This is a separate society, but what the groups, um, how they interact in terms of use of the space. Um, it's from the grant funding advisory committee terms of reference. Um, I have put in italics any of the language that I figured could be helpful if we wanted to expand the scope this evening. Uh, and then just reminders from the MGA, the Municipal Government Act, regarding council has delegated specific powers to this group and is the ultimate authority. Uh, but then the town bylaw in particular, so that's 1070-4. Um, so representing the voice and will of the community, supporting and facilitating, and advising council on matters relevant to their mandates. Um, just putting that in front of the committee to keep that fresh if there are any changes to the scope. So well, that's, that's what Heather was just referring to. That's page two of the handout that she gave out earlier. Are, Alice? Um, are you suggesting that we could potentially put the definition of boardwalk under the scope? Is that? Yes. OK, thank you. I think I think the scope is the natural and built environment within the back Maxwell Lake area as outlined in Appendix C. And then we have a different for definition for boardwalk as being parts of the path that are constructed with port. Mm -hmm. and, and like associated structures, I guess, like you can call it with the tower waterbeck in the definition of boardwalk. Maybe yeah. not, I don't know. But it seems to me that that definition is close, is, is, is pretty well the scope. If I may, in that case, I'll move the definition to the scope. Committee could vote on that. And then if that is passed, we can move on to defining boardwalk. Okay, maybe that sounds reasonable. Not seeing any objections, we'll do that. So, sorry, Heather, that's that's going to be the scope. We didn't actually vote on it yet, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, committee. So everybody has an understanding of um, what we're looking at, what we're going to vote on. We're going to 
expand the scope section to include what was previously the definition of uh, boardwalk. Any comments or questions? Not just going to move up in the appendix. What do you mean? It's going to become appendix A, for example. Oh. <laughs> Uh, first of all, my general comment is I hate when something refers to appendix because a lot of times people don't. I wish we could actually have a little map right there in that paragraph. Yeah. So my first thing would be to remove it from the appendix and put it right into the document. And then I guess uh, my point is this is going to be 2.1 or 2.0 of the document. So I'm hoping that in that case, if, if it's in the appendix, it's going to be the first thing in the appendix. I don't know what else so is this a friendly amendment to say well my, add outline in bigger one and then okay bigger? so is that at albert's point i would i don't know what i'm supposed to do at this point but i would get it out of the appendix and put a map right in that area so you would make a motion that that's what you want i would like to make a motion that to remove from appendix c and put a map right in the document under 2.1 do we have or is this a motion on the table right now that we have to approve first though yeah, you're right. We should probably somebody actually has to move it first. Well, like it was Heather's suggestion, but if somebody thinks it's an, a good idea, they actually have to move it and then we'll vote on it. Right now, it's a suggestion from administration. Okay, so I move to define the scope in two points. One as natural and built environment within Max Lake area as outlined in figure one and add and with the understanding that the map will be put below in the text. Okay, uh, I do have a bit of a concern <laughs> and it's regarding the appendix and making it a figure instead. Heather, you could maybe speak to it. There's there's generally things that are parts of these that are referred to as appendixes, and there's reasons for them. Uh, they're generally separate, maybe changeable documents, and that's why they're referred to as an appendix. You don't have to change terms of reference if the appendix change. You can probably speak to it better. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, in terms of legislation of statutes, I have not come across an instance where there's ever been a figure within the text. Um, this terms of reference forms part of a bylaw passed by town council. And therefore, for ease of facilitation, as Councillor Ostashik has said, if we ever change what that map looks like, it's significantly easier to revise an appendix or an attachment than to bring a bylaw amendment within the text for the scope of this section forward to council. My suggestion for a friendly amendment would be to keep your motion, but leave it so that it says Appendix C. And then if there is a strong appetite for committee to change it, we can. there can always be a motion to change it to a figure if everybody really hates that it's an appendix. That's, that's fine. Currently amendment accepted. Okay, thank you. Beth? Um, to Jan's point, what is appendix A and B? <laughs> oh. I, I mean, I can speak to it, Heather. You can speak to it right now. Uh, they are in, they're part of the terms of reference. Do you, know, you want to scroll to them? <laughs> appendix A. Appendix oh, A is missing. So I don't know Heather about that. But we have Appendix B. Heather put in her email Appendix A is, uh, I forget what it said. It was a, it's a map, but it's not ready yet. Is yeah. That's what it was. I can't remember what it was. She spoke to it in the email, and that's why it wasn't part of the package. But I don't remember what she said it was. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it's probably like the area from where we represent, like the, the the boundaries of what this committee represents and stuff like that. But we were moving the scope from something that didn't even exist up above it now. So I, mm -hmm. I still think this is going to end up being Appendix A, just from where it falls. Yeah, I think I think we just trust that administration will yeah. number sure. of appendices accordingly. And I don't disagree, but I think council should, or committee should decide 
if they want that to be part of the scope first, and then once that's agreed upon, then if they want it to refer to Appendix A and it's the first appendix because it's important and it's listed first, that should be a separate, a separate direction. So where are we at, sorry? So, so we were voting on that? And yeah, Alice has made a, a, a direction request to uh, include that statement that's redlined in, in the scope section. Sure. Okay. Committee, all those in favor? Okay, that's carried unanimously. So now if you want to change it, well, maybe I, I so would... it's appendix A or whatever. Yeah, that's or if you really hate that it's an appendix and you want it in the body, that's no, I understand the I understand the whole bureaucracy of changing bylaws. So yeah. Um I do like the idea of it being the very first thing in the appendix because this is what we're all here for. It is the Beaver Boardwalk. So I'd like that to be the first thing that people see. I trust that it's going to be end up being appendix A just because where it falls is 2.0 or 2.1. Um I don't know if I need to make a motion on that or whatever, but probably should do so it's captured. Well, we okay. have it captured there. Um, yeah, I think if I may, we can skip the motion for that item because the order of attachments in terms of this is referenced first, comes first, can be dealt with administratively. Okay, thank you. Cool. Good. Okay. Therefore, we don't have a definition for the boardwalk. <laughs> Um, 8.30, motion to extend. Yeah, that's up to committee. It is 8.30, so we could move to extend or defer the remainder of the agenda to our January meeting. It's up to committee. Yeah. I'd like to defer the remainder to the next meeting. Okay. All right. Jan's made a motion to, I think, I don't know if he's actually on his phone, right? John made a motion to postpone the remainder of the agenda to the January meeting. The committee, is there any discussion or questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of postponing the remainder of the agenda? Opposed? Sorry, Tom, was that for or against? <laughs> Uh, that was that, that was for I promise. Okay. Okay. So that was unanimous. Then uh, remainder of the agenda is postponed. John? Can I can I just add something? I don't know. I, um, someone, yeah, we have an adjourned. Yeah. Can someone please look into getting Bill's information updated on the website. It's his request for email. Yeah. Sorry, there was an email that went out about that. It didn't go to all of the committee, but it did go to uh, communications, where Heather is requesting communications to make that update. Okay. Hey, all right. With the rest of the agenda items postponed, all we need is a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, all those in favor. Okay, that's carried unanimously. We're adjourned. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.